If you watched last week's video, you'll instantly recognize this photograph here. And when I took this, I, the conditions were just beautiful and I really quite liked this image. But as the weeks gone by and I've taken a closer look, I've grown less fond of the, the photograph. It's, I still quite like it, but there are a number of things that uh, I, I'm not too keen on. The, the most obvious being the, uh, the branches uh, jutting in over to the right here. Uh, there were a number of people that, that commented about this, why didn't I clone them out? And at the time, I they didn't bug me, but as I look at the image, uh, they look like uh, uh, sticks without any kind of context. If the whole tree was in there, then it might be a little different, but just jutting out like that on their own, uh, they're more of a distraction than um, than anything else. So I did clone them out, and, and here's the example where I've cloned them out, and I, I do think it's an improvement. But I don't think I really did this area justice. So I did end up going back. And because we'd had uh, beautiful weather all that week, I knew that there was a, a really good chance that uh, I'd have fog on the lake again. And I wasn't disappointed. All right, when I got here, all of the fog was down at the other end of the lake and which wasn't great because this part it just looked like a gray mass in the background but what's happened now is all the fog has come to this end of the lake and it's even more of a gray mass as you can see it's uh, <laughs> it's not very it's not terribly interesting without a little bit of light okay so the composition that I have graphically I think will work quite well just needs a little bit of light so our fingers crossed hopefully we'll get a little bit of light coming through these clouds here it doesn't have to be the sun or anything like that it could just be a bright area in the clouds just to give it a little bit of texture so it's not just this gray mass of, of nothingness i can just see the hillsides back here so these islands are more like silhouettes than than anything else okay i'm not sure if you can see this but i'm getting a, a really nice kind of an orangey glow in the background now so it just adds just a little bit more to this image and that's what you're you're kind of looking for I mean you can add it in Photoshop but I'd rather it natural light than anything else because it just it just gives the image for me a little bit more integrity uh, waiting for the light and you know the, the the kind of feeling you get for waiting for that light and, and when everything comes together now whether this image works or not I, I don't know I, I have a hard time picturing things until I can actually open them up in uh, in Photoshop or Lightroom just to have a closer look at them but uh, things are starting to come together you can see that the clouds are slowly kind of dissipating and you get a bit of a, a glow behind there yeah it's really quite beautiful so I'm going to just take a whole bunch of images and because uh, it's changing constantly okay this is the composition that I have now, the main subject for me is this little island with these beautiful little pines on them. I just love that. Now, I have put it right in the center of the frame uh, with the intention of cropping the image, probably to a four by five. Now, the way that I've composed this, okay, there's a couple of things in here that kind of get in the way a little bit. Uh, so I've kind of tried to compose around them. The first one is this log here. I, I don't mind the log. I'm just not keen on the angle that it's at. Uh, it would be great if it was more of a kind of a going across the frame diagonally like this rather than just uh, horizontally. But you know, I can't change that. Um, so what I've tried to do is uh, have it so that the trees aren't quite touching the uh, the log here. I don't want them overlapping because that just for me, in my, to my mind, it creates a little bit of confusion. The other thing that's really important to me in this is this, these limbs here coming out. I just love those graphic lines of the limbs. So since they're quite important and I love the graphic nature of them, I've composed it so that none of them are intersecting with the, uh, the island in the middle. Because as soon as you do that, to my eye, it loses its, uh, its graphic nature. They kind of blend into one and then it kind of confuses the, the viewer. Well, what am I looking at? We have this, these beautiful lines 
that look like they're in the foreground, but you know they, they merge in with the background. So I've tried to fit them in little slots here. So everything kind of has a place. I mean, you have to make compromises because not everything is perfect all the time. So I have these graphic uh, limbs coming down. I have the island, I have the log, and then I decided to, to include this pine on this other island here uh, the whole reflection and the top of the tree as well but I might crop it on the uh, the left I'm not sure the one part that I, I'm not keen on is this mass over here there's just too much going on here so I'll probably crop that out like this that's what it looks like to me on the back of the screen of course my it could change when I open it up but that's kind of the idea now I am going to take some shots with uh, both a, a 10 stop ND filter because I'd really like to flatten out that uh, that water. Uh, but I'll also take some without the, the ND filter uh, just because there is some texture in the clouds and if I put an ND filter on it'll just smooth everything out so it just looks like this mass of, uh, of white. So I'm going to take some with and without. I'm really happy with the way that these two images turned out. Now the first image, uh, I, I used the Breakthrough Photography 10 stop ND filter and I think it worked really well. It, it smoothed out the water. It didn't smooth out the sky so much that there's no texture so I just left it the way it was. Now as far as the confusion on the right side with the trees in the background there, I decided not to crop them out because I think there's enough separation between them and the branches in the foreground that you can kind of define what the two uh, objects are. If they were the same tone and they blended in then it might be a little bit more confusing but I'm quite happy with how this image turned out. Uh, as far as the other one here, this close-up, I really like this. It really simplifies things. Uh, the light was just beautiful. I have warmed up this image a little bit uh, because I really love that kind of sepia tone. But by combining the breakthrough photography, uh, ND filter, and those solid lines of the island, this photograph has a really nice ethereal uh, feel to it. And I'm, I'm really quite happy with the way it turned out. Overall, I think both images uh, represented the area much better than the first image that I took when I was with Gavin. And um, I think in, in both cases, I've done the area a lot more justice. So it just goes to show sometimes when you return to an area and you have a definitive idea in your mind. And I think on this trip, it worked out really quite nicely. And after I took these uh, two images, I had a really nice uh, surprise bonus waiting for me in the parking lot. All right. Now... I was just about to leave uh, Gordon Bay and uh, I had to use the facilities but behind the uh, the outhouse I found these ferns, sword ferns, uh, just covered with uh, hoarfrost and they just look absolutely fantastic. The, uh, the lake is just over here, my van's right here so you know I'm just in the parking lot basically but uh, the ferns just look fantastic and all the fallen leaves are kind of lots of brown tones, earthy tones with a little bit of moss. I'll just turn the camera around and I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So as you can see, the, uh, the ferns are just rimmed with all this frost and the leaves that I'm standing on are all nice and frosty. So I think I might uh, stick around here just for a little bit and, and see if I can find some compositions. I love details like this when everything's rimmed with uh, a little bit of frost. It just adds so much detail and texture. Uh, I might even try a pano. I, this section here, 
uh, I think I'm going to try a three vertical pano and see how that works out. I mean, it might not work out, but um, I just, I don't know, I just love that, that detail. spending about an hour in the parking lot there photographing all the uh, the ferns here and you may have noticed there's some familiarities between three images that I've shown you and that is they were all taken within a probably a, a 20 foot square section of this forest uh, I searched around quite a bit for various compositions but there was just this one section uh, where the ferns were just covered in frost just a little bit more and I found some really beautiful patterns and uh, textures uh, with the frost on the leaves and the ferns. Now the three image pano uh, I, I really like it it turned out really great uh, it doesn't really have a, a center of interest it's more of a pattern shot but as I've said in past videos I really like this this type of photograph. As far as processing goes, uh, it was pretty straightforward. I did darken the top slightly so that uh, the viewer's attention is more drawn to the uh, the bottom center of the photograph because that's where the, the interest for me is. And I also darkened the outer edges just slightly uh, just to keep the attention in the center there. But I, I'm really happy with this uh, three image pano. This second image, again, is all about texture and subtle color. Uh, I really enjoy the, the subtle greens or kind of a bluey green throughout this image here and the, uh, the, the wonderful browns and, and textures, at the, especially at the bottom of the frame there uh, with all the ferns uh, pointing kind of downwards. Again, for this photograph, I uh, darkened the, uh, the outer edges a little bit and the top just so that there was more attention to the, the center of the frame because I really do like those uh, four uh, separate fern fronds kind of pointing downwards uh, to the, the textures there. I used to do a lot of this type of photography especially when I was photographing gardens and I really should do uh, more of it because I, I really enjoyed uh, wandering around this little section of the forest. I actually enjoyed this more than more than the lake believe it or not. Just trying to find compositions out of all this chaos is uh, I, I just love the challenge and that's the the thing I really enjoy about photography is challenging myself to find uh, meaningful compositions out of uh, utter chaos. All of these images that I've shown you would work very well as black and white uh, photographs uh, mostly because they are fringed with all this white frost so you have this wonderful detail and it just lends itself really well to black and white photography. Now this last photograph here was actually just a small section of the three image pano that I showed you earlier but I just love that the way that the the ferns kind of intertwine especially on the left side of the uh, the image. It does work as a, as a square crop but I, I kind of like the way that the ferns point uh, into the left side of the frame. So you start over on the right hand side and they, they all kind of lean over to the, the, the neat patterns that they're forming on the left side. So I haven't cropped this image, but once again, I have darkened sections of it uh, just to kind of draw your attention to certain points in the frame. And in this image, I've darkened the, uh, the right hand side of the frame, the top of the frame, 
and a little bit on the uh, left hand side of the frame as well just to draw your attention uh, again to the the center portion of the uh, the photograph overall i think it worked out very nicely and i did take a number of other images but i think these three are probably my favorite out of uh, the four or five that i did take if you'd like to have a closer view of all of these images be sure to visit my uh, website and i'll put them in the gallery section so you can have a closer view all right everybody that's it for this week's video uh, if you wouldn't mind give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video that would be very much appreciated if you do enjoy the content of this channel don't forget to subscribe all right everybody until next week bye bye <laughs>